husband and I became foster parents in 2011 after hearing from our local Imam about the growing number of Muslim children entering the foster care system without enough Muslim families licensed to care for them. A year later, we welcomed our first foster placement, a five-year-old Muslim boy who showed up at our home later that evening with just the clothes on his back, a small backpack with a change of clothes, some toys, and a small blanket gifted to him by the agency. Although I was raising three boys of my own, I wasn't really prepared for the challenges that parenting a foster child would bring. I mean, imagine what it's like to be taken from the only home and family you've ever known, placed in a home full of strangers, not knowing whether or not you're going to be going back to your family. During the challenging times, I realized that I couldn't really reach out to my usual network of family and friends. And a mutual friend in 2015 introduced me to Rania. My husband and I felt a sense of obligation, so in 2015 we became licensed foster parents. In addition to raising our three kids, we fostered both refugee and domestic foster kids. I remember having an instant connection with her and pretty soon we became each other's lifeline. We stayed in touch and we shared our fostering experiences. Uh, help with resources and sometimes just for a sympathetic ear. Through our fostering experience, we met with other Muslim foster families and foster children. The challenges that foster families were going through were actually causing a lot of families to leave the fostering system, as many that were becoming licensed. We also realized that the majority of Muslim children in foster care were with families of other faiths, with families that weren't familiar with our traditions, our holidays, our Islamic concept of modesty, and Islamic dietary guidelines. Things such as enjoying Ramadan and attending the local mosque are much more difficult when living with a family of another faith. And it didn't take us long to realize that we needed to create a nonprofit to support Muslim foster children and the licensed families that care for them. There was a void in the Muslim community and there was a gap in the foster care system and we needed to work to connect them. That motivated Rania and I to establish the Muslim Foster Care Association in 2016. We began working with local and state agencies, educating them about the unique, the unique challenges that Muslim children faced in the foster care system. Refugee foster children experience many changes and need to adjust to things such as being with a new family, a new country, a new culture, and a new language. They lose so much of their identity that maintaining their faith identity by living in a Muslim home is crucial. When you're moving into a different home and families are opening up their homes to you, if you have the same cultural background, or even not even the cultural background, just the same religious background, it gives you guys something to bond over. And you know, faith is just something so huge. And a lot of us foster children, we, we don't come with anything when we move into the new homes. So having our religion be maintained is very important for us. Being in a home that is not yours is very challenging and difficult. Personally, I had a very rough time adjusting to my new foster family. I don't have experience being in a non-Muslim foster home. However, being in a Muslim foster home, I was able to find my connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Muslim community around me. During this foster experience, I was able to make new Muslim friends who I am still friends with this today and will be going to high school with within the upcoming months. The Muslim community is not immune to any of these issues. We have all the same problems, substance abuse, domestic violence, physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental health issues, and we have children entering the foster care system for those very same reasons. There's no immunity to our community. And I do see that as our population grows and expands, so does the number of Muslim foster children who are in the system and in need of homes. Through the organization, we increased awareness in Muslim communities about fostering, in addition to providing direct support to Muslim foster children and the families that care for them. People ask me why I chose to be a foster parent. And, you know, really a few reasons. Primarily, I was motivated by uh, a teaching of our Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, uh, about taking care of orphans. And something that very, really resonated with me was how the Prophet said, you know, anyone who takes care of an orphan will be with him in paradise. So for me, that was something that always got me interested in being a foster parent. 
MFCA was my support, it was my rock. Um, I don't even want to say it because it, there are people, uh, beautiful people, any sorts of advice, um, any time of day, any time of night. The door was wide open and without MFCA, I don't know how I would have really functioned as a foster parent. Please, please, please support them. Once I came across the Muslim Foster Care Association, I didn't feel so alone anymore. There was an organization that can help not just Muslim foster children, but to help the Muslim foster families. My first Muslim foster child came to me from a missionary home. He attended Bible school, Bible camp, and Sunday school. I made it my mission to have his other brothers move in with me and their brother. Within one year of living with me, they not only embraced their faith and identity, but they were also reunited with their mother. I studied Islam for a long time before I decided on my truth, and part of that journey was learning the story of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and how important it is to take care of orphans. My first placement was two children who came in at a very young age, and their past is pretty terrifying. I am scared at the road that they will walk down every day. I believe only faith, a strong support system, and structure will get them through the road they take as adolescents into adulthood. I do believe the work that MFCA is doing is absolutely crucial for Muslim children. Our mission is to provide support and resources for Muslim foster youth and the families who care for them. Our programs include comfort care packages, which are given to foster children who enter the system, who are sometimes dropped off to their foster home with nothing but the clothes on their backs. These packages include essential items such as clothing, toiletries, and Islamic items such as prayer rugs, prayer beads, hijabs, and prayer clothes. In the past few years, we've been able to provide anywhere from 80 to 120 aid gifts to Muslim children in Michigan. During the month of Ramadan, we've also been providing meals to foster youth who are fasting and do not live near a Muslim community. We receive requests from agencies to provide Islamic clothing such as thobes and jilbabs, as well as Islamic educational materials such as books, Qur'ans, and more. We recently began providing assistance to youth who are aging out of the system and, in, and are placed in independent living. Our assistance programs include covering rent and utility payments for youth who are unable to do so and helping the youth overcome any financial struggle that they may be going through. We also help connect Muslim foster youth with mentors and tutors who can assist them with schoolwork and, le and developing life skills. Another initiative that we've been working on has been providing educational presentations to caseworkers and foster parents on best practices when caring for Muslim children. Our presentation titled, A Guide to Caring for Muslim Children in Foster Care, includes basic information about Islam and Muslims, as well as our recommendations for accommodating Muslim children to best accommodate their faith needs. Our work as an advocacy organization includes assisting of people who are interested in becoming foster parents with navigating their way through the, through the process and also assisting agencies who are looking to place Muslim children in Muslim foster homes. Ronnie and I wanted to thank those of you who have helped get the Muslim Foster Care Association to where it is today. But there's still so much more that we need to do. The need is only growing and there is no other organization that is focused exclusively on caring for Muslim foster children and the families that support them. Please join us in reviving and supporting the Sunnah of fostering by supporting the essential work that we are doing at the Muslim Foster Care Association. With your help, we can continue to expand our programs and provide even more support to Muslim foster children and the families that care for them.